course the start of carving a paddle is finding the right materials. We found this wind blow ash, it was still fresh so not ideal, it's better to have seasoned but it's not always easy to find. We had a hard time finding you know larger diameter trees in the first place so we settled with a fresh log but it was ash and it was sort of straight which is great so yeah it was probably as good as we could hope for but yeah it should be straight and it shouldn't have many knots knots create weak spots in the wood and it's also a lot harder to carve through or around or anything like that <laughs> we bucked out a two meter section and we split that two meter section in half and then our idea was to make a paddle out of each half this side and this is on that side. Yeah, there has to be an axe going in there. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Move that one. And as seen in the previous video, we went from four hands to three. All right, you down? Yep. Oh man, we need conveyance, man. Spoilers. What about a bushcraft wheel barrel? Yeah, nice one. But I don't want to be making the wheel, no. <laughs> yeah. What happened with your hand, Dylan? I chopped it with an axe. As you do. How's the one hand business uh, going? It's going great as you can see. Mm -hmm. Well I'm up to like one and a half now. In the middle of winter everything is wet. In Ireland they would say tis pissing down for soaking a brad in the field in the scutter. But yeah it doesn't make fire lighting any easier. Julius said way to go is feather sticks. I made an example once of using fat wood as a as a backup plan. Jackpot. Wanna smell? It smells good, doesn't it? Okay. It's a bit wet. Oh, it's soaking, but there's definitely pine pitch on this as well. So um, it's a bit of an experiment. This is this branch is straight off the tree, like you know. Now we're talking. Hmm? Wow. Come on, utilize it. Utilize. Utilize it. Well, in theory, I have like three hours now to... N now. <laughs> I don't know where that is coming from. I don't know what you're waiting for, man. Well, this is... For, you don't have this with a feather stick, do you? No. But watch, watch it go out now in a sec. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't understand why you don't start building your fire. This stuff is called. Brem, brem. Brem. Brem, 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 brem. Gors. Yeah, this is brem. It's called gors. It's not called brem. Yeah, brem in Nederland. But like once you have firewood, uh, fat wood, you can throw in some wet tinder, you know? Mm hmm. Because the fat wood. Uh, it's so strong 
that it'll just, you know, it'll stay burning until the rest is dry. Do you know? Mm hmm. Hopefully now. <laughs> mm hmm. Alright. Are you not impressed? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. That's not what I asked. You know, those fat wood pieces are still burning. That's the only thing that's burning. Mm hmm. And I throw in this bunch of sticks. Did you feel these sticks? Hey? Yeah, I did. They're soaking, right? <laughs> Does that look cool? <laughs> What happened to my gloves, Dylan? Uh, I think you put them on for a whole 10 seconds. Hmm? So yeah, then Julius started chopping away the wood around the paddle. He made some depth cuts with the buck saw to avoid over splitting and taking too much material off his half log. This is a really nice secure way of slowly trimming down your material. Nothing worse than starting and then going too far and then there's no return. He went over to some axe carving and it was by far his most used tool. Uh, he's very familiar with it. Uh, you can hold the material with one hand and chop with the other hand. This makes it very quick and effective. You gotta be careful though that you don't chop in too deep because then you're at the point of no return again. Grill's holding up, eh? What kind of grill? A bit of BQ. Oh, it's a bit rich now at the end, isn't it? Here you go, dude.
Jaeger, 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 move away, buddy. Man, look at them curls. Smooth, man. It works nice, man. Those draw nice. I love it. So when you think you have the roughest work done, it's a good thing to go over to a draw knife. This, compared to the axe, is more precise. So you need a solid base. You can't hold the piece with one hand and draw knife with the other. You need two hands on the draw knife. But like that you can make long, even strokes and you take material off the whole section. Try the other draw knife there. <laughs> this seems to be doing a better job, but then again, it seems to be less sharp. They both have an edge on the wrong side. Then you start making, you know, round, you know, like the shaft mm -hmm. shape. I think for now this is a lot better. Yeah. And they have to be very sharp. That's a key to start with. I yeah, yeah, say. yeah, sure. I have two nice and flat sides. So uh, I think we should make a proper drawing on it for the exact shape and make sure it's gonna be proper straight. How about that? Cool. Need a piece of cordage for that. Quite good. Oh, it's nice, man. Get in there, man. Hmm? It's time for upgrades, man. I'm gonna give you upgrades.
I'm going to do it, man. Call it good. Hmm? I'm surprised that it is holding up so well, the amount of grip. Nice one, Dylan. You're welcome. One handed. Uh... Oh. Yeah, your pack is going out, man. Yeah, work stand uh, version 2.0, Al. How is your project getting along? It takes longer than expected. It's very repetitive too, I'd say, yeah. is it? I love the X work a lot more than the draw knife. And look, you're wearing gloves now. How, how thick do you want to make the shaft? Like maybe another half a centimeter? A little update for you guys. I have a Harry Potter uh, officialized bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't try it at home, guys. Yeah. A crook knife can also be used as a one-handed draw knife for finishing jobs and for rounding little corners and stuff. It's a really useful tool, it really has its place. Of course it's more versatile maybe as well and more packable. Julie's finished off the paddle with just a little carving knife. Just round off little chips and little corners. And after that, he was left with a super nice result. All right, nice one, man. These are nearly done, aren't they? Uh, yes, all they need is some sanding and oil. And, but, but, but they're still quite fresh. Yeah, we use green fresh wood 
it might not be ideal but uh, we had limited logs in the area we'll first have to dry them and then oil them but before that we're going to use them and test them out next week already next week that one is a separate video actually and we started that one uh, this summer already and we finished it now so this one is from the from the Acer Sycamore and this one is uh, the ash which we saw in this video yeah no I think they turned out great man fair play to you this is a bit narrow I think but at least it's a long one yeah this one is a little broader but this one is also plenty big we should use them as they are and we can always you know adapt them a little bit change them a little bit the grain structure is also not completely ideal you know you want to firmly have them completely straight in through to the pedal so the especially, sides won't especially with the skin. Get off. Yeah. But you need a very thick lock for that to accomplish that. Almost double the size of your pedal to have them perfectly straight in. So the sides here are, might be a little fragile. But we'll see how they hold up. And uh, there is a completely uh, different video coming up on uh, these pedals. We'll uh, post that in a few months I think. We post it now on the Patreon and you can support us there and see it there. And to uh, recommendate another video to watch, maybe check out Bushcraft Bench Battle. Find your own spot, man. This was our previous big crafting project. That, uh, that's good crap. Okay, see you next week. New trip coming up. Yeah, nice one. Please let us know what you think of the video. And the results? If you have any suggestions or questions or mm -hmm. anything at all, please leave it below in the comment. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching.